If you're early, you're on time. If you're on time, you're late. If you're late, you're Comcast. Warning. The following podcast is another wasted hour. Warning. The following podcast is another wasted hour. Don't waste my motherfucking time! My dear precious Mr. Pacino. Wasting your time is exactly what we're going to do tonight. Instead of a useful, productive hour, it will be replaced with two ignorant, uninformed, ill-advised, self-deprecating morons ranting about opinions they have no right to have, which are probably wrong and absolutely do not matter. With that said, if for some god-awful reason you enjoy wasting the precious little time you have on this earth, like, I don't know, asking the FBI director if you're being investigated three times. How about now? How about now? No, seriously, am I? Search for Another Wasted Hour on all social media sites and share, follow, mention, and like, and review us. Also, please subscribe to Another Wasted Hour on iTunes, Google Play Music, or Stitcher, and review us there, too. Our goal is to convince you that where we hail from just outside Washington, D.C. is not just a city of politics and scandals, but one brimming with art, music, and culture as impossible as that may seem. So listeners, now that you know why you're here, I am Keith, and across from me is my co-host, absolutely Victor. Victor, why are you here this week? I am absolutely Victor. Yes. And I have a very important reason to be here today, Keith. Why is that absolutely Victor? The Mistress of Destruction is the most lovely person on the planet. I couldn't agree more. She's in this house. Yeah. She's beautiful. Mm -hmm. She's witty. Yeah. She's George to talk to. She really is. She's a goddamn national treasure. Yeah, I would totally agree. Absolutely, Victor. I uh, can't see any flaw in your argument at all. So basically, I'm just here to see her. Yeah, absolutely. I I did notice this is just a, an odd question, Victor, because, uh, you know, I we usually don't spend a lot of time together. But have you, uh, I don't know if you've been dieting or have you lost height? Uh, a little. I was working on it. Okay. okay. Hey, that thanks makes... for noticing. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. no problem. I figured you went to the tiny gym or whatever it is you mm-hmm. do. Um. So <laughs> I'm I'm glad to hear. You know what? I will make sure to pass those things on to the Mrs. Dest- of Destruction, who is obviously not here this evening. Um, but uh, I'll let her know when she uh, next visits the show. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. The Mistress of Destruction should know that. Yeah. No, I, I will let her know. Out of curiosity, though. Yeah. What the hell are you doing here? You know, that's a difficult question <laughs> that uh, I don't know how to answer. Without getting a little emotional, I have determined that I don't understand sports at all. Mm. I don't know how they work. Ah, You know what actually the problem I have is athletes. I don't understand athletes very well because so last night I was watching a sport they call hockey. Hmm, sports ball. Yeah, well, it doesn't have a ball, so it's more like sports puck, and there's only Hmm. one of them that has that. So it's a specific sports puck, and they played uh, our our Washington team, known as the Capitals, for those people who either don't like hockey or are from um, uh, the desert. I guess there's no hockey in the desert. Uh, They're called the Capitals. They play hockey here in Washington, D.C. They were the best hockey team in the regular season. Uh, They got a thing called the President's Trophy, which says, you are amazing. And then we wanted them to go win a Stanley Cup. That's the thing you win when you're the actual best team in hockey after the President's Trophy. That's like, hey, good job trying really hard during the regular season. And they were in Game 7, best of seven series, against the Pittsburgh Penguins, uh, Another hockey team, you might imagine. Mm. Um, it would have been harder if they were a soccer team. But um, <laughs> they would have been sliding everywhere and we would totally have won. But they didn't. They didn't win game seven. And there's like interviews every year because they always leave. They always like lose the second round, it seems like. Joker. Yeah. And they always have interviews afterwards. They're like, well, we just didn't really put, you know, the best effort for it. And I want to be like, what are you waiting for? <laughs> like, what is the point? In which you're like, today, we're doing it today, people. This is the time. Like, <laughs> like if you go to work and then you like screw up, that's fine. But if they say like, hey, you know, um, I'm glad you're here at work because today is the most important day of your career. Right. We, we're we releasing a thing on the Internet that's super important or we're delivering food to the president of the United States. I don't know what it is that you do, <laughs> but whatever would be your Super Bowl, you would like come at it right you would just you would put everything into that yeah and like, for some reason athletes go ah 
um, I'm tired. And so I don't get it. I don't, I don't understand. The Wizards did the same thing. They had game five, which wasn't an, like a must win because they're not eliminated, but it was like a, you should probably win this one. And they just didn't. They just got blown out. It wasn't even like a, they tried real hard all the way to the end and there was like a weird bounce. It was like the Caps got, uh, uh, got shut out zero to two and the Wizards like lost by like 20 points. And I don't need, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how, I don't know how sports work anymore. So, that, uh, that other sports ball team, they won, right? They With did, the, the, the Nationals, yeah. yeah. But the, the Nationals won because it's like the first tenth of the season where it doesn't matter. Mm. We're really good at, like, don't matter games <laughs> in D.C. Like, oh, is this going to count for anything? No, we're going to fucking dominate. <laughs> we're going to take you out back and just whoop you. And then it's like, how about for a cup? Nah, you can have it. We're good. Yeah, we're, we're very thoughtful that way. Yeah, we're okay. Even more importantly than that, uh, there is there are two people here in the studio that I understand more than sports. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you uh, to members of the band Box Era, Doug and Logan. Hello. Doug? Yeah. Hey, hey Logan. Keith. Nice. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, thanks for joining. Do you do you guys understand sports at all? Uh, I actually I'm on a professional curling team. It's that's, the real man's hockey. That, actually, no way. So we, I actually like went and took curling lessons once. Is this up in Laurel? That do you do with the, up in Laurel by any chance? Uh, yeah, I run a clinic up there. Um, okay, whoever you learn from, I probably taught them everything. Are you know. serious? Oh, uh, cool. Yeah. So we went to there's an open house, and I did it just because it was like twenty bucks for the day. You go and like learn curling. And I did it so that... Very then high I, value. It was so great. <laughs> the, like, the experience itself was pretty awesome on its own, but it was way worth the $20 just so that I could come back. And when friends are like, eh, yeah, uh, so what'd you do? I go, I went curling. They're like, fuck you. You didn't go curling. And like, totally did. And they're like, Lucky. how did you do that? Like, everyone's like, is that a... I thought that you just watched that on TV and then just, you know, wondered how it worked. Not that you could actually do it. And so I got to actually do it. Well worth the $20. Uh, anyhow, um, so uh, tell us a little bit about yourselves. Why are you here this week, guys? Uh, I'm here to show off my glutes. Um, <laughs> lots of curling has you, given me tone back there. Have you been uh, going to the tiny gym as well? <laughs> uh, <laughs> tiny gym, no. <laughs> no, okay. Um, the gym that I go to is huge and full of curling champions. Um, <laughs> and you don't really realize this when you're watching it on TV, but all of that tone comes from the sweeping in front of the. the oh the, yeah, I can if you're imagine not familiar, that. Yeah. You're obviously familiar from your recent experience. Yeah, for the people who are listening that don't know, go watch curling, idiots. It's awesome. <laughs> Dummy, it's, it's you, an Olympic sport. Assholes. You, you throw a rock down a sheet of ice, <laughs> and then you sweep in front of it. It's basically like what. It's a sport that if people invented a sport while on LSD would make. <laughs> yeah, like, they were like, okay, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. We get stones and ice. Does anybody have a brush? <laughs> like, and, 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 and like that was, they were like, it sounds like this. It's like, you know how kids will invent games with just what they have on yeah, them? Exactly. It's yeah, exactly. Like it's like a, a prison adult, game. Yeah, it's like <laughs> what adults did, right? They were like, I don't know, we've got 10 rocks, they, we've got this frozen <laughs> lake and these brooms. What can we do with this, people? They want us to sweep the floor. we got to find a way to make it interesting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's ice shuffleboard. It yeah. is. It is. <laughs> But with giant boulders, <laughs> which is the best thing. It wouldn't, like, a shuffleboard's like a little puck, and you go, oh, I understand that. But somebody was like, mm, pucks, let's use this rock. <laughs> How much does it weigh? Like, 40 pounds. Perfect. Uh, all right, Perfect. let's do that. Nothing could go wrong on this ice-covered lake. Right, exactly. Put a 40-pound rock on it. Uh, <laughs> How about you, Logan? Why are you here? Glutes as well? Um, No, no. No. I... I know how to curl up into a ball on the couch. <laughs> also helpful. The original yeah. curling. That uh -huh. also grows your glutes. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know that. A different, mm -hmm. a different, a different form. Different Not an shape. Olympic sport, though. Oddly. <laughs> it should, should be. Yeah. Should be. It wouldn't be a winter or summer Olympic sport. Both. <laughs> All the time. One with a blanket and one without. <laughs> so you're also here to uh, tell us about a CD release show that you guys are doing on Friday, uh, mm -hmm. the 26th of May, down at the Velvet Lounge. Is that right? Yes, sir. Excellent. Uh, Velvet Lounge is a little local venue that I believe has been plugged on this show before. Uh, they're great. They host a lot, you know, a whole variety of genres out there. 
And we I'm going to need you to speak into the microphone. <clears throat> a whole variety. <laughs> a big variety. You sound variety. like you're driving by. Like, uh, I'm doing a show I actually am. Doug. All right. See ya. Doppler dog. Uh, so we played there a few times, and it's always a whole heap of fun, and we're going to do it again. Well, the uh, the uh, uh, Velvet Lounge is an awesome venue. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a mm -hmm. smaller venue, really intimate, but some of the uh, best sound for a small venue that yeah. I've ever mm -hmm. seen. Agreed. So I would right check on. it out. You guys are upstairs, I assume. Yes, right? sir. Yeah. We bring the energy. Oh, that should be good. All right. Well, hopefully you brought the energy tonight. I know after you do that show, you're going to be heading out on the road into New Jersey, Connecticut, and Delaware. Maybe you'll tell us a little bit about that later on in the show if you guys are cool with it. We'd, be, we'd love to. All yeah, right. please. Awesome. So we're also going to be playing a song. Um, if you're interested in hearing what Box Era sounds like, fast forward to the one hour mark of this podcast and you can take a listen to their song, Maps. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to take you on a little journey uh, through the world of the internet news. This is what we like to call the weather report. So if you guys are not familiar, uh, the weather report is what we, uh, we are going to bring to you, me and absolutely Victor. Uh, Real news from around the internet, and you, using whatever criteria you feel is uh, valid, are going to let us know whether or not it should actually be news. All right. So um, I think, uh, Victor, are you going to get started? I am absolutely, Victor. Yes, you are. This week, the Richard Nixon Library needs you to know something. Yep. It's very important. What they would like you to know and told everyone in the world through a tweet was, fun fact, President Nixon never fired the director of the FBI. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag FBI director, hashtag not Nixonian. Wow. That's, That's a little snarky from them. Yeah. That, well, it's especially good considering that this week in history was also the Watergate scandal. Like, oh, wow. <laughs> I like, you know why they jumped on it was because they were like, for once we're better. Yeah. We can actually, we can get out in front of this we gotta one. We got to use this opportunity for PR. Like for, for like eight years, they were like, just shut up. There's nothing we can say. There's nothing. <laughs> We've got nothing. We just, we just have to sit here and just take it every time they say horrible things. And this time they were like, oh, oh. Uh, yeah, we didn't do that. <laughs> we did a lot of other shit, but that one we didn't do. At this point, that. we all know he was a crook, but now they can be like, he was less of a crook. Right. He was like, less Hitler. <laughs> he Hitler was a, Jr. He was a crook. He just wasn't a big dumb douchebag. Like, yeah. So, win. Yeah. So, better hair. I think that's important. Bigger Historically, hands. that's important. To know. <laughs> he had bigger hands. Bigger socks. <laughs> so, guys, the question is, is it news? Uh, no, Keith. No! Oh, Victor's going to be so upset by that. I am absolutely Victor. I am very upset. You always are. You, Sorry, you really, Yeah, <laughs> you're always very upset. Do you do you concur, Logan? I concur, yes. Okay, all right. So Library, libraries just aren't news anymore, let's be real. <laughs> Nobody goes That's there. Fair point. If it was the Nixon internet, then yeah, yeah that would be... <laughs> the Nixon <laughs> chat room. <laughs> yeah, that would totally be it. Uh, all right, so next one I've got... Um, I feel very strongly about this one. Uh, this is something that has uh, plagued uh, culture for a long time, and that is uh, the definition of art. Uh, in this particular instance, uh, there was an art exhibit, and some students uh, left a pineapple in the art exhibit, and then people took it for art. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, they... There's a quote that says, uh, I saw an empty art display stand and decided to see how long it would take, uh, stay there for, or if people would believe it was art. So the, uh, the student then put a, a uh, pineapple on the art stand. The irony is the empty art stand was the art. That was, that was actually, I would think. No, <laughs> yeah, <maybe> what? <laughs> it's a statement. No. Four days later, the student returned and the pineapple was in a glass display case. <laughs> so I like that they upped the ante, right? They were like, not only is it art, who left this art out? <laughs> Holy shit, somebody get some glass around this. Somebody could steal this art. It's the goddamn Mona Lisa of pineapples are over here. Yeah, yeah. So it's, uh, they they know first, they said, uh, Natalie Kerr is a, a cultural assistant for the festival who organizes the display. She said she wasn't the one who included the fruit as artwork because she is allergic to pineapple, <laughs> which is... Uh, <laughs> It's a bold, bold point there. I sympathize. I yeah, absolutely. So uh, so the question is, uh, new definition of art. Is it news? Uh, uh, I no. say yes. 
Oh, oh, oh we have a split decision. Band's over. We're done. <laughs> See, what are you, Yoko? I was gonna say. I was gonna say. Art uh, is never news. <laughs> um, but but pineapple. I feel inclined to vouch for pineapple in the news because it's been getting a bad rap lately. With the whole pizza. Yeah, well, pizza that's dilemmas. where it started. Yeah. It would have been news if the student had died. Oh, right. Because yeah. then after the student's death, it is art yeah. at that point, right? <laughs> well, that's and interpretive news. art. And yeah. that, that I can vouch for. Uh -huh. If if Natalie Kerr had eaten the uh, the fruit and then died from the allergic reaction, <laughs> oh, <man>. performance art <laughs> instantly. So, Let's see that show. All right. All right. That's, a, that's the uh, dictation on that one. Uh, I think you got this one, Victor. I sure do. Since I'm Victor. I would like to play a little game with you called Guess That Airline. Okay. <laughs> Let's do this. I'm going to give you a quote. Lufthansa. And you're going to tell me what airline said that stupid ass quote. Oh, okay. Quote, at no point during the flight did flight attendants suggest that Ms. Harper use cups instead of the lavatory. NASA. <laughs> <laughs> That's, no, it's not correct. No, okay. good thing you're good looking. You're not All very right. smart. Okay, guys, you have a, a guess for this? Uh, I'm gonna throw American Airlines in there just because mm, they. No. Mm, it's too easy. Sorry, Doug. Logan, any guesses? I'm gonna go with United. That's a strong Bingo. one. Bingo! So <laughs> it happened United, to me once. United Same Airlines thing flight. <laughs> United Airlines flight. This lady claims that in the first like 30 minutes or so of her flight, she really had to go. So yeah. she got up to go to the bathroom, mm -hmm. and the flight attendant said, "No, no, turbulence are coming. You can't do that." Yeah. Please note the fasten seatbelt sign. Right. She said, "But I really got to go." Uh huh. Flight attendant said, "Don't care." So she said, "Can I have a couple of?" perfectly empty cups for no reason and the flight attendant said sure so she gave her the cups she filled yeah. filled the cups uh -oh. uh, you know biologically and uh, and then she got yelled at and frog marched to the bathroom to empty her cups even though the fashion seatbelt <laughs> sign was on <laughs> now, I mean she warned them now, United Airlines says it was actually in the last 30 minutes of the flight which okay. is when FAA regulations say you must be buckled in okay but then why was the flight attendant up around giving her cups? Oh. And what were the the passengers next to her thinking during this entire ordeal? Like, I should have flown American Airlines. So it would have been better no, than this. No, they're probably or... thinking, oh, thank God she didn't try to go out the window. <laughs> 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 that would be uh, my uh, I think that happened in Sharknado. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, wow. So... I determined that United Airlines has started to to become less of an airline and more of just a punchline. It yeah. seems like yeah. they've moved into they've killed rabbits and dragged people off of uh, airplanes while they're like unconscious and then letting people pee in cups. <laughs> they have increasingly fewer fucks to give, really, about <laughs> right. what anyone thinks. We're, we're united. Fucking deal with it. <laughs> Hashtag you're welcome. <laughs> Is it news? Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's definitely news. Are you with them? Yeah. I'm OK. Him. Excellent. I think we're maybe tied at this point. I think it feels like maybe. Uh, so this is super important. I don't know if you guys know this, but there's a, a big fad out there. Uh, there are some people who are allergic to gluten, right? And uh, and then there are some people who aren't allergic to gluten, but won't eat gluten because it's evil right. in some manner, right? It's bad. I don't know that they can bad. describe why. They just say, but it's bloating and uh, makes me feel bad or something. <laughs> Makes my um, hands small. So we're we're not gonna make you know we're not gonna make light of the people who have a condition that obviously makes them uh, you know sensitive to uh, gluten. But to all the people who are just taking the fad diet, um, uh, I wanted to let you guys know about a very important service that is out there. Uh, they I, I'm gonna say this wrong, but it is the Tescamish Police Department. <laughs> I think that Tech Umish. Ten bucks says not. <laughs> Tecumseh? Tecumseh? Is that what it is? Mm. Tecumseh. Tecumseh is. Police Department uh, is offering free testing to make sure that there is no gluten in meth. <laughs> Apparently, there's some gluten-laced meth out there, and if you bring your meth to the police department, they will test it for free to make sure that there is no gluten in your meth. They might also keep your meth. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently... <laughs> Maybe some people are falling for this. I'm guessing those people are on meth. <laughs> See, for this for me, it's totally challenging the reigning stereotype of the meth user as someone that strictly eats like pork rinds <laughs> and 7-Eleven uh, pizza um, and like, uh, what are they called? Slim Jims. Yeah. So, mm. which I'm pretty sure have gluten in them, believe it or not. Yeah, probably. So, uh, all meat gluten. It's just all. I'm going to say it's definitely news. Yeah. So there you go. 
It's definitely news, and anything that follows it, I think, is also yeah, news. Yeah, I'd like to follow that I would love one. to see Indeed. any, any stories after that. I am. Br- I think this is just a brilliant way to do it. There's actually another sheriff's office, uh, Kiowa, uh, Kiowa <laughs> County. Apparently, if you're in a county or uh, an area that you can't pronounce, they make up really creative ways to get drugs. And um, oh, got to. And so, uh, yeah, they the uh, this county actually took out an ad in the local paper inviting drug dealers to rat out their rivals. <laughs> 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 hey, do you hate that guy because he's uh, g- getting in on your business? No problem. Come tell us about him. That's genius. Yeah. So, uh, so there we go. We got news. Oh, I guess this is me now. So, uh, speaking of people who ruin crime. Uh, <laughs> In Arizona, there's apparently a gentleman on an Arizona radio station who's been putting out a PSA on how to hide child pornography. Oh. So basically what he's saying, I I mean, I'm sure this guy's like... Or it's his a PSA how to do it? Uh-huh. So it, <laughs> almost certainly there's like, you, you know. this was Arizona, right? Hmm, okay. His buddy got busted or something like that. So now he's real mad because <laughs> yeah. the penalties for child porn can be worse than the ones for murder. And he's real rah, rah, angry. Sure. So um, he just wanted everyone to know that if you happen to be looking at child porn, your internet provider could report you to the police. And then your police are allowed to come in and like seize your computer and stuff. Okay. So he he doesn't want anyone to put their family through like a ton of grief. Right. He wants people to save the taxpayers of Arizona a bunch of money. You know, don't go to jail for the child porn. Yeah. And it's not that he wants you to stop looking at child porn. He no. just says, don't get caught. Yeah. <laughs> just don't get caught. Just don't. That's really yeah. nice of him. Uh, is there another guy who's like, I mean, murder has a pretty long like sentence, too. Let me show you how to kill people who look at child porn. Like, because that would be a great PSA. I would do that. So I guess, like, the police in his area, or maybe even the state police, had to be like, hey, real quick. You can't (laughs) do that. Could you not? Could you just not? Do you think they came over and they just knocked on the door and they're like, hi, uh, is Steve here? And they're like, oh, yeah, I'm Steve. Uh, We have a few questions. (laughs) Oh, is it about the PSA? No, we'd just like to see your (laughs) your history, your search history, because we've got a feeling. (laughs) We are interested in your interest in child (laughs) pornography. Right, exactly. There's a lot of Disney on here. Um, So, all right. Is it news or not news? Uh, I don't know. I'm torn on this one. I mean, maybe it is news because I always thought there was nothing to do in Arizona. Yeah. So, uh, So, yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's news. What do you think, Logan? I think it is. I yeah? think it um, brings attention to this guy, right? First off, and the whole issue, it's good. I, I mean, it's it's good that they're cracking down on it, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah. I like that they're Free like, speech. don't put don't put your uh, your family through it. I mean, imagine how your kids will feel. Like, how about that kid? <laughs> how that kid feel? So, uh, all right. So <laughs> we definitely a Trump voter. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, all right. So is news very very interesting? I think you may have taken the lead now. I Absolutely think we might different. be tied. This may be our tiebreaker. Is it? Okay. Um, so uh, this one I like to uh, preface as uh, this week in China. Um, if you've listened to the show a few times, I've been noticing that almost every week we have uh, some story out of China. Last week, uh, I believe a man pushed another man off of a bridge. Um, so uh, this week... Um, so. It, You've heard like when you go and get gas now, there's this big thing where people are putting skimmers on like the gas, uh, uh, you know, the the gas machines or what do you call them? Uh, Pumps, I guess. And so you're supposed to like like move the the credit card uh, scanner to see if it's fake because people might steal Mm -hmm. your credit card information. Which is genius, by the way. I wish I thought of it first. Right. Yeah. And so they're doing that with ATM machines. So there's a lot of fraud happening around ATM machines. This is a new take on this that I was not aware of. Uh, a woman in southwest China, I'm not even trying to say the city, it's just a Chinese <laughs> city, uh, had uh, a man, uh, let's say, uh, coerce her into um, this particular scam, which is uh, he convinced her to pour Coke into two ATMs to get her money back. I didn't know that was a thing, but apparently he convinced her. That you've put your money, I guess, in the ATM or in in the bank just to get it out instead of putting the card in in your pin. You just pour Coke all over it. Oh, it's an ancient Chinese tradition. I understand the confusion (laughs) here. I didn't know about this. 
uh, it didn't work oh. on a couple levels. First, no money actually came out of the ATM. Weird. I know, it's strange. Uh, she also caused uh, $8,600 worth of damage to the ATM. <laughs> So she lost money. And on... she lost a dollar fifty on that Coca-Cola. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. She didn't get to drink the Coke, which Ugh. is not satisfying either. Um, <laughs> what so... I like is she tried multiple ATMs. Like, I like the one who drove around. Yeah, the first one hours. she was like, this is obviously the ATM is broken. Yeah. And then she was like, <laughs> I'll put a note on it. <laughs> like, ATM doesn't work. The irony is that that note, totally accurate. Yeah. Right, because by the time the next person came up, they it were definitely like, didn't it work. doesn't work. There's Coke all in it. Here's the and thing. That ATM only took Pepsi. <laughs> oh, you beat me to it. Oh, that's, that's a good one. Good one. So the question is. I was actually going to say RC Cola. RC <laughs> Cola. Ching Yang Throwing Cola. Uh, so we know that it's not the appropriate way to use an ATM, but is it news? Yeah, that one's that one's. Easily news. Yes. Yeah. All right. Because now I know news. what doesn't work when you're trying to rip <laughs> off an ATM. Yeah. If anybody comes up to you and goes, trust me, <laughs> just uh, you just throw a Coke on that ATM. You'll get money out of it. You know. Uh, Ancient Chinese wisdom. Sprite. It's totally Sprite. Right. <laughs> All right. So that is the end of the weather report. Uh, and uh, thank you for helping us with that. We weren't sure what was news and what wasn't news. Real news. Real news. And we, we needed your infinite uh, wisdom and guidance on that. Uh, speaking of infinite wisdom and guidance, uh, I'm assuming that uh, with all of your wisdom, you'd like to guide people uh, to your e uh, EP sh uh, release show that is coming up. Uh, so tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah. So uh, so we're DC locals. Um, we all come from different areas around DC. Mm -hmm. um, the Logan here is from Annapolis. The rest of us are from Frederick, Maryland. Okay. Uh, but we like to consider that the far reaches of the DMV. Right. Um, and the name, so our whole our whole spiel is kind of like DC locale. Okay. Um, the name box there is a reference to some housing out by University of Maryland. Oh, known okay. Known as the Knox Boxes. Knox Boxes. And this, uh, this EP is going to be called uh, the Knox EP. Okay. So it's kind of a little, you know, bone that we're throwing to oh, the college bar kids and all nice. that. Nice. And this is uh, a, a show that, after much ado, is finally happening with the release of this project. And we're going to go out and play it for people that have never heard us before. And it's going to be great. And that's over at the Velvet Lounge on Friday, the 26th of May. Mm -hmm. um, are you playing with anybody else at, at the Velvet Lounge? Or is it just yes, you guys? indeed. Mm -hmm. Actually. Our friends, uh, Surprise Attack. Okay. Who have been on the show before. They're good friends of ours. Yeah, mm -hmm. they were here just a, a few weeks back. Jay and Tom. Mm -hmm. Oh, great guys. Yeah, yeah excellent. Cool. Uh, and so it's you, uh, the two of you guys. You have anyone else on the bill? Mm -hmm. uh, Urban Shaman Attack. That is, an, it's a an double attack. That is it's a, a surprise. The one -two Urban punch. Shaman. That's a attack. lot of attacks in one show. <laughs> Hiya. Are you in between them, just going like, we need a break from all <laughs> the attacks? <laughs> all right, and then they're like, we're going back at it. Um, <laughs> So, uh, so Urban Shaman Attack doesn't get the benefit of the surprise, right? Uh, but <laughs> but they have magic on their side. Yeah, they're attacking you on a different level. Yeah. Um, All right. Very cool. They're actually hosting the show that we're playing in Delaware at the end of the tour, also. So, and you guys are playing New uh, New Jersey, Connecticut, yep. Delaware. So you're mm -hmm. going on uh, a world tour, assuming that that world the is world the world only exists in the Northeast yes. of the United States. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's a small world. After as far as I'm concerned, it's flat. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> And most of the NBA believes that, I believe. That's what I think. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well. And uh, um, so we're going to play a little snippet from the a song Maps. Um, now, I noticed uh, you sent this guy, uh, this over to us. Really cool, kind of uh, jazzy, psychedelic. Like, there's a bunch of little influences in there, some funky stuff happening. Um, no words. I noticed that there weren't any words. Is that pretty typical for the entire set? No, or? it's like, it's uh, about half and half. Half mm -hmm. and half. So you do a bunch of instrumental stuff. Yeah. And then you have also uh, songs. Uh, who's singing? Uh, that would be our illustrious, uh, our leader, Randall Hayek. Who's too uh, too shy Randy. to come out here and mm -hmm. yeah. face another wasted hour? Um, his mm -hmm. voice is a lot more shrill, <laughs> so we decided to just completely pull him out of the equation. We Boy, that was to... honest. Yeah, <laughs> he uh, only but... speaks in falsetto. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, what's going on, guys? Um, and this is the last time you'll see this band together. It sounds great <laughs> in context of the music. But, uh... <laughs> is it like the uh, guy from Coheed and Cambria? Yeah, kind <laughs> of. That's yeah. what we're going for. <laughs> Um, so, and, and how would you describe your sound? How would you describe, uh, this song specifically? Uh, we usually go with electro 
jam, pop, funk. All right. I like that combination. Well, let's take a little listen to it. Uh, the whole song obviously will be available if you want to uh, kind of skip past the sample that we're going to give you uh, at the one hour mark of the podcast. Fast forward and come back if you want. Uh, but this is a little sample of Maps by Box Era. I notice you have a lot of sounds going on in there. Yeah. Like a lot of people are used to kind of the, the bass, guitar, singers, drums, things like that. Mm-hmm. Sounds like there's a, a sax in there. Yeah. Or so what else do you have going on in there? Our sax player, uh, one of, so on a, in most of the sets, he incorporates both the use of the saxophone, a tenor and an alto. Okay. And then this thing called the electronic wind instrument, the EWI. Oh, um, all right. Interesting. You don't see him around that much, yeah. but uh, it's definitely a pretty popular in certain circles and it's essentially a wind powered synthesizer. So he's able to hit oh. like those super low bass notes mm-hmm. and some cool little trilly stuff up high. And everything Is that that really like buzzy, like bass thing that was happening? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. The I was wondering where that was coming hits from. Hits you right in the, in yeah. the gullet. <laughs> yeah. So it's a really interesting sound. How did you come across that? Like a has he um, always been kind of playing synthesizer and uh, sax or did that come around a little later? I think know? it was just a, an exploration of, of what we could do with sound. I mean, the band's been around for a couple of years okay. and I think the instrument is probably at this point, maybe three or four years old. Oh, wow. I, okay. Someone's going to fact check that. I'll be way wrong. But right. It's been 1960. <laughs> when we came <laughs> across it, it was like uh, that could be, that could open up some possibilities and we were trying to figure out how to get a little bit more electronic influence yeah um, and oh, it was definitely right. worthwhile we call it the ewok affectionately <laughs> and we carry it with us everywhere we go oh all right well very cool i mean i love i love that you guys have something that sounds you know uh pretty different and has a lot of different sounds like i said that that makes it unique um and uh again if people want to hear that whole track go to the one hour mark of this podcast and you can hear the entire jam that you guys are doing um if you want to catch it live is this a song that you guys are going to be playing live yeah it's usually in the set okay mm-hmm. so yeah, so it's you guys, one of our favorites. You can hear this live uh, down at the Velvet Lounge in Washington, D.C. on Friday the 26th at their EP release show uh, with all of the attacks. Every single attack <laughs> will be there. Um, and uh, without further ado, we uh, since we've now talked about the future, which is your show, uh, we will now go into the past with This Week in History. This is pretty simple. We're going to go through the journey of what has happened in history uh, this week. And uh, at the end, we're going to ask you, in your humble opinion, uh, for whatever reason you feel, what is the most historically impactful thing that happened this week in history? Real history. What's that? Real history. Real history. (laughs) This actually happened. We hardly made any of it up. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Just a little bit. So I I will get started. I think this is uh, probably pretty high up on the list of impactful things. 1659. That's a, a way back uh, in the way back machine. Uh, the celebration of the holiday of Christmas is made illegal in Massachusetts. Ooh. Did you know that? Did you know at some point in time you could not actually like uh, celebrate Christmas here in Massachusetts where we are right now? <laughs> no, I mean <laughs> where we traveled to. That's and... pretty hardcore, right? Right. I mean, we grew up we all grew up with Christmas. But I also think uh maybe they replaced it with something that was cooler. And do, we you, just do you think there was like another holiday at that point it where they like... were like, it's jelly bean day. Like, I mean that's better. We would totally like jelly bean day. Pinatas everywhere yeah. full of gluten free meth and let's <laughs> stop a party. Right. Sixteen fifty nine. Like, I mean I'll be honest, we don't really need Christmas right now. We've got all this gluten free meth. I mean I wouldn't even be able to go to sleep. Then Santa wouldn't come. So <laughs> let's not do it. So while you, don't you guys have to worry are about cavities with no teeth, while you guys are driving through New England, you're probably gonna be in Massachusetts at some point. Don't you fucking dare celebrate Christmas. <laughs> yeah, do not. Well, here's the the caveat to that. In uh, 1681, it then became legal to celebrate Christmas again. So it was only eh, like 20 ish years in there uh, that you couldn't. But it was a very sad, traumatic 20 interesting years. Interesting couple decades, for right? Sure. Where people were like, 
not getting presents what do we do? sucks. <laughs> yeah. uh, and so, yeah, so 1659. And then we'll fast forward a little bit to 1892. Um, Just a quick jump. Yeah, a few, a few centuries forward. Uh, the youngest jockey to win the Kentucky Derby happened in 1892, this week in history. He was 15 years old. His name was Alonzo Clayton, otherwise known as Lonnie. He, ride a, he rode a, a, a horse called uh, Azra to victory. Uh, the interesting piece of this, I thought, was um, the source of this particular uh, fact uh, is uh, a book called The Great Black Jockeys, <laughs> which was two interesting facts. One, that in 1892, there were black jockeys. That's pretty cool that you uh-huh. always think of like with sports, it took a while for you know integration. Integration yeah. happened earlier, apparently, in horseback riding. Um, second, uh, there's a book that's also named after my underwear, which I think is interesting. <laughs> it's is true. Interesting. I was yeah. just surprised to hear that there. Uh, see, I always thought that all jockeys were had they had to be ten years old or younger, and uh, <laughs> and so that, you, fi- you hit me with fifteen, and I was honestly shocked. You were like, oh, the oh rest of them are older than that. He's that's out crazy. of diapers. <laughs> <laughs> Something to think about, though. That guy won the Kentucky Derby when he was fifteen. Yeah. What the fuck have you done recently? <laughs> I know. That's really true. Yeah, you didn't want to know me at 15. I've never I, even ridden a horse. I, I, yeah. I don't, I don't know if I've seen one in person. <laughs> I, would, I would run. I would hit it with my car. Because it's after me. It's got huge teeth. Um, <laughs> so uh, in 1914, which is, you know, just a few years later, uh, that's when Mother's Day was established by Congress. Oh, before that, there were no mothers. No, not at all. <laughs> None, not a single mother, just just guys just banging just each other's penises guys. together. And even then, <laughs> just, a, just on the one day, they established it as the second Sunday in, in May. Right. Heads up, that's coming up. Yeah, so. just so you know, well, it depends on when they're hearing it. It's actually... Because when we release, what we should be saying is, oh, you done fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> if you did not know it was Mother's Day, you might want to buy mom right now. a lot yeah. of flowers. If you're looking at your calendar thinking, when is that? You're screwed. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, so what's interesting, though, about Mother's Day is that the woman who actually in- invented Mother's Day and said this should be a thing later regretted it because she didn't like how commercialized it became. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's perfect. Yeah. That's, so, that's pretty good. I like, like a that. couple decades later, she was like, that was the stupidest decision I ever made. Do you think it was like, uh, here's the one I like, is that they had Mother's Day and they were like, we should have a day dedicated to mothers because of how important they are. Happy Mother's Day. Can we vote? No! <laughs> you can't <laughs> vote! Just like your one day! And every other day is going to suck. Stop just getting gotta... so mouthy, woman! Do my Get laundry. One day. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You can vote on Mother's Day, which is not a day when we hold elections. Yeah. You're this, welcome. Is, this is why you only get one day. You just keep taking and taking and you're taking. You're not going to get any mail. <laughs> you're going to you're gonna make breakfast for everyone in the morning. Right. Yeah. Just, you can vote on what you're going go to goddamn make me for church. lunch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> um. That's awful. So uh, next up is actually a couple decades later, 1944. I think I'm in the 1900s and we can identify with this shit. A little bit. Uh, The first U.S. iBank is opened. That's not I like iPod. That's I like your fucking eyeballs. So uh, these these two doctors got together and they, uh, in New York, and they created the first iBank. And honestly, when I read that, the first thing I thought was, ugh. Yeah. Yuck. This the is first, the squishiest bank in the world. The first thing I thought about is, how do you stack them? <laughs> yeah, what do those safety <laughs> like, deposit just, boxes look like? That's yeah. going to be like, oh, it keeps falling over. They're all falling <laughs> everywhere. This is such a stupid idea. It stinks in here. Yeah. yeah uh, you got to have a whole shelf for left eyes, a whole shelf for right eyes. It's yeah. terrible. And Mix then just one like in the contacts. middle, and you're like, where did that come from? Holy shit. Do we know a cycle? Oh, fuck. Jesus Christ. Where did that get? Oh, my God. This one looks really creepy. I you don't need know a, how it... a pool triangle. <laughs> right. A bunch this of them. <laughs> you make, they're all just in pyramids of eyes. <laughs> Come pick out a pyramid of eyes that you guys want. You need it? They didn't know what to do with them either. Because it's like 1944. They can't put them back in people. No. They're just like, we're just collecting them because we're weird. Well, also, <laughs> making a deposit had to be an entire ordeal. Like, <laughs> <Right. yeah. laughs> Everything after that's really difficult. How do you find right. the place? 
Yeah. No. <laughs> they're about as useful and valuable as the fucking Doge coin. So yeah. <laughs> you roll up, and you're like, I'd like to deposit these. And they're like, Oh, All right, God. so I just sign this. Yeah. Okay. Here you go. Got that. <laughs> can I get the these pen. out by just pouring Coke on an ATM? <laughs> y- yes. Yeah, you can. That's that's how that works. Uh, all right, so I have a very important birthday. I don't know if um, you listened to prior episodes of the show. We hope that you did. Uh, we uh, introduced you, if you had, uh, to one of our favorite people in the world. In 1963, uh, a lovely la- lady named Lisa Nowak uh, was born. She later became an American astronaut and then went on to uh, drive from Houston to Orlando wearing underwear and her travel supplies included uh, adult diapers, a black wig, rubber tubing, gloves, a BB pistol and plastic bags uh, because she was apparently going to confront the other lady that her ex-boyfriend was now dating and kidnap her or you know, so, like yeah. NASA does. Yeah, that's an NASA, NASA. Uh, twist. <laughs> I've, I've ever heard one. Yeah, so 1963, that started. That's uh, happy birthday! Happy birthday! <laughs> we, crazy wench. Let's go reenact her greatest exploits in honor of the day. The thing that I'm worried about is I know way too much right now about Lisa Nowak, which means that maybe I'm obsessed. I don't know. Mm. I have to have a look at that because <laughs> I know what she drove with. I know when she was yeah. born. Love- I know the travel like destination she was going on and how long it took. And- but don't you want to know more about the nuances of the relationship? I- like what what was it that made them break up to begin with? And was that- this other woman more she attractive? She probably just always did that track. <laughs> <laughs> like This wasn't the first time. She gotta she stop always- doing this, Lisa. Uh, yeah, I gotta go on my uh, diet diaper run like oh <laughs> we can't do this this is so weird honestly it was probably the adult diapers that killed the relationship <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. that was, yeah, i'm a baby <laughs> she's no. used to moon travel this is Hold no big me. deal yeah and so uh we'll fast forward five years to uh what i think I'll, I'll be honest with you gentlemen if this doesn't take the most important historical moment in history i don't know what will in 1968 mcdonald's introduces the big mac hamburger mm. that's right nationwide can we can we do the song? Can you guys do the song? Do you uh, know the song? No. Two all beef patties, mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. and a shoe, mm-hmm. and thirteen sauce. wallabies, and <laughs> some <laughs> matches <laughs> on a sesame seed bun. Szechuan sauce. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows it. We can eat the burger, but we're pretty sure there's like you know, and a partridge and a pear tree. Like, does that like, mean that the song did its job? Right. It already instilled in society the need for this product, or maybe it didn't do its job because nobody knows how it no, goes anymore. We have no idea. Do that's a five gold. Golden <laughs> That's all we know. Right? What rhymes with food poisoning? <laughs> yeah, that's, so yeah, that that was done. Apparently, it was originally uh, going to be called uh, the Aristocrat and uh, or the Blue Ribbon Burger. Boring. Yeah. Yeah. And so Big they, Mac was expert level marketing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Victor, you know any other facts about the Big Mac? Um, they suck. They oh, suck. Yeah. They give you explosive diarrhea. Oh, yeah, they yeah. do. They, they really do. They do. Uh, I didn't want to say this out loud, but it was also created in Pittsburgh. Oh, I was trying to avoid that, Keith. Oh. Too soon. Oh. Too soon. You know how I don't believe it was created in Pittsburgh? There's no fucking french fries on the sandwich. That's right. Mm. Because uh, when you add french fries to anything in Pittsburgh, it makes it a salad. Yeah. That's how that works. <laughs> um, so... Um, so, uh, yeah, you. Next up, in 1992, there's That's this so close. infertility doctor, right? Oh. Tries to knock up the ladies. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, he had to spend five years in prison because he was knocking up the ladies with his own sperm. Oh. Well, then I could be an infertility That's doctor. That's what we like to too. call the old switcheroo. <laughs> yeah. he, was, uh, he was getting high on his own supply. <laughs> 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 But then he was also, which is really fucked up, he was convincing other women that they were pregnant and they weren't. Oh. <laughs> were they just fat? Well, that's another type like, of examination. Yeah. They all came in and he was like, nah, girl, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> I gained 10 pounds. Mm, pregnant. You're totally pregnant. You got it. You Do nailed you it. Do cups? I need to. <laughs> that's how we test it. Yeah. Um, right out the window. And <laughs> so uh, last Love. but not least, in uh, 19... 19- 94, the most recent of all of our events, a young man named Michael Fay. Do you remember his name by any chance? Michael Fay. Michael Fay. Sounds familiar. He was an American teenager 
uh, who liked to uh, spray paint cars and do other vandalism. Unfortunately, uh, here in the United States, that is just uh, people go, oh, stop doing that. And maybe <laughs> they'll slap you on the wrist. If you do it in Singapore, you get four lashes with a rattan rod from Ooh. the Singapore authorities. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they must be good if it's only four. They wound up. That's, oh, that, was, that was a running start. <laughs> a different guy for each one. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I could be mistaken, but I think you get more lashes in Singapore for um, chewing gum outside your home. Right. Than for graffiti. They really frown on that shit. You get Damn. you get more lashes for graffiti in Singapore than child porn. <laughs> in Arizona. Yeah, it's true. And there's a PSA about it. <laughs> so I mean, if you don't get caught. Right. That's the trick. We put a PSA on how to do graffiti in Singapore. The spray paint provider actually went and disclosed the information to the police of Singapore. Yeah, and that's what got him. Exactly. That was yeah. the problem. Uh, 40 yeah, lashes. So 40? No, four. Four, four lashes. lashes. Four just really It'd big ones. <laughs> I imagine what that guy looked at. Like, cause he was probably like, what? A reti- All right, let's do this. And the guy came out and was like, <laughs> <laughs> I hear that I'm here for lashes. And he's like, oh God, just murder me. Just kill me right now. Just throw a horse on me. And <laughs> well, Jimmy, what'd you do this summer on your trip to Singapore? Not sit. I don't want to talk about it. I don't I did, want to talk about it. I didn't it. sit all summer. Um, so that is it. That is the week in history. Gentlemen, what is the most historically important thing that happened this week in history? Hmm. I want to give it to the last one. <laughs> oh, yeah, really? Really? I was going to say. Little wow. Jimmy Singapore. Um, <laughs> Isn't that you forgot all the ones before it and you're just like, that one. I mean, it just takes the kick. <laughs> this kid obviously took the worst spanking um, in world history and it happened to be on this day. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. This week in this history. Week, this yeah, week. this week. And so um, yes. I'm going to be thinking about it every day. And he week. probably thought like, <laughs> oh, I got caught for like spray painting. What's the worst that could happen? And we're like, oh, Do you worst. are in for luck. <laughs> this is going to be fun. Um, now you're going to spray paint this guy's arm with your blood. Um, so (laughs) was that the line? That's the line. Oh, okay. Oh, well, good to know. All right. Turn off this podcast. It only gets worse from here. (laughs) (laughs) You don't want to hear the rest of this because now we're heading back to box era and they're going to tell us intimate facts about their lives. Gentlemen, I don't know if you are aware of this, uh, but there is scientific research showing that the most intense memories throughout your life are attached uh, to the various senses that you experience them with. Um, One of the big ones being uh, the sense of uh, smell, uh, but obviously sight being our most dominant hearing as musicians, obviously one. So what we'd like to do is uh, do a little segment we call the five senses uh, and go through some of the things as you've gone through your music careers and on tour in the uh, practice uh, room, uh, as you go into the studio for recording while you're doing a show on stage, what are some of these memories that you guys might have uh, either by yourself or as a group um, in your experiences as a uh, box era. So first I like to start with the most dominant of all of our senses, the sense of sight. What do you guys that have as a memory that is particularly horrible or particularly <laughs> wonderful or just memorable that you yeah. saw? So the one <laughs> that, uh, the one that immediately came to mind, it's actually a story about the interruption of sight. Mm-hmm. What? Oh, okay. Um, this is interesting. Of- I like the, the take on it. So we were at uh, a little local DIY spot known as The Void. The Void. Okay. <laughs> and uh, that's in College Park, Maryland, hosted by the folks at Void Life Records and Tomato Dodgers. Plug, plug, plug. Please and, do. Yeah, um, absolutely. How do people do, find the void? It's, I think it's just like a grapevine, like mm-hmm. to know kind of thing, but they pack it out. It's okay. a little house that hosts like up to 200 people. Wow. It's sweaty. It's grimy. It's fun. You sure this wasn't the smell? Yeah. Memory <laughs> that you... I think everywhere we go, there's some interesting smells. So <laughs> I just decided to kind of go past that one. So what happened? How did you lose your sight at the void? Um, I was wearing glasses, much like I am today. Okay. And, yeah. Um, so we had like a four song set. And we were playing second, and we go into this room, which I think was a garage. Mm-hmm. Yep. And it was packed with human beings, uh, just just like they didn't care, and no one else cared what the repercussions were of packing so many people into this room. So it was sweaty, and smelly, steamy. Yeah. Uh, but the steam, uh, there was some some definite body condensation going on. Uh huh. So, Ooh. like maybe a minute into the first song, my glasses started to slip down the bridge of my nose. 
Uh, also, I believe they were taped together. That might have also. Been. <laughs> um, but they actually <laughs> fell. They fell throughout the course of this show, and I couldn't see for ninety percent of the time. And uh, they actually fell on the drummer's snare. Um, and he almost, he just he almost bashed to me like, get out of here. I got to play this. And I was doing everything just like with my eyes closed because I didn't want to look like a, a cross-eyed fool. Um, I like to imagine he just went after the glasses, just pieces flying around. Like, Fuck you, glasses. I, I trying to push him around my toe. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Uh, so that is uh, the first time we've had somebody talk about the lack of sight. Uh, so I like that a lot. Uh, let's move on to... Uh, a sense that I think is pretty easy for musicians. This, uh, the sense of uh, hearing. Sense Sound. of hearing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So here's another <laughs> lack of. I think the first. This is all just gonna be lack of. We the can't first smell note I have in for this one. Yeah. Uh, it just says doing the butt with Randy at Marcus Miller. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Context. I, I'm yeah. <laughs> I, I'm trying to figure out how that sounds. That's the <laughs> thing. Yeah, that's a. I you mean, I, I assume that would be like a visual, not a. Yeah, that's something like that. So funky. Yeah. Um, yeah, you nailed it. Yeah. So, so the sound. Can you so, share that with a little more bass next time? <laughs> Take care of that in post. I, I'm going to need a, a virtual synthesizer to blow into. <laughs> oh. Um. So this one actually. Logan, I, you want to tell us one? It was about the interruption of sound. I'm sorry. We, they're all going to be like this. That's fine. That's <laughs> a, this is the first time we've had the absence of everything. I like this. I like the, like, here's a list of shit we didn't do. We <laughs> didn't do it. I'm going to do, like, the, sen the sense of feeling. And you're going to be like, we can't feel. Yeah, we have no <laughs> None of us have feelings. <laughs> We're sociopaths. Um, all um, right. Sound. What is it? Well, so for this show, we, we did a um, gear sharing thing. A lot of uh venues and a lot of yeah when you do concerts a lot of times like you'll share a back line so mm -hmm. uh like the the headliner will bring their drums and a bass mm -hmm. cabinet sometimes even a guitar cabinet and then everybody will uh plug into those and use those uh instruments so you don't have to bring everything on and off the stage right, right? so yeah so this that's is at gypsy sally's by the way which is mm -hmm. local, local venue. yeah mm -hmm. another yeah. great spot um, it's a really good venue our drummer mitch was using another drummer um i forget which band but do you know exactly? Um, Stoop Kids, maybe? Stoop Kids. From um, using his Stoop Kids Attack? I assume Stoop that you just <laughs> play with all people with attack in their names. <laughs> Surprise, Stoop. Yeah. Um, and we're going, through, we're going through a song, and all we hear is a big bang. Okay. We look back, the the set is in pieces. <laughs> Literally. What? The toms are rolling, both of the rolling toms down, rolling fell, down the like, stage. They're like two arms of the drum set. They yeah. just both fell off. Oh it was in the middle God. of like a chorus of like a really driving kind right, of you're song. Like, uh, <laughs> Everything just stops. And then nothing. And you're like, this turn isn't around driving. and he's just, he's playing <laughs> on the air. There's nothing underneath. <laughs> I like that he kept going. He's, <laughs> he's like, I don't like care, I got drums. <laughs> it's like a wind up doll. I rehearsed it just like this. <laughs> you're like, why are you playing so loud? Now you know, because he doesn't know there are drums there. He's just doing this and there happen to be drums in the way. Well, um, you know, when you're, when you're playing live, you always have like a, a contingency plan for if something goes bad in the middle sure. of the song. Mm -hmm. But this one, I think, was the only time in, in two years <laughs> yeah, of playing where right. we literally just... You just stop um, and you go... All right, we're just going to play the next one now. Yeah, um, we're going to fix the drum set, <laughs> all of it. Um, <laughs> but it turns out it's because the other band's bassists set up their drums. Oh. So um, just goes no to show why uh, bassists are pretty much good for... Nothing but playing bass. No offense, Logan. I, I would have no... The same thing would happen if I said I'm the <laughs> Logan, I assume... Self-aware bassist. You are the bassist, mm -hmm. right? So uh, at least you... Yeah, at least you know where uh, what you're good at. And that is rolling a bass <laughs> cabinet and niche. playing bass mm -hmm. and then leaving and showing up late. Uh, Stay in your place. Yes. Um, all right, so let's move on to uh, sense of taste. Mm. What do you guys have for the sense of taste? Uh, this is a good one. Okay. So uh, again, you guys don't know Randy. Just picture um, Aryan Nation. Um, <laughs> that took a turn <laughs> that I was not expecting. Beautiful right. blonde hair. Okay. Sparkling blue eyes. Yes. Um, burns in seconds. What does he taste under. like? Well, he tastes <laughs> like curdled cottage cheese. <laughs> Salty. Because Ugh. we replaced his shampoo with curdled cottage cheese and what? didn't tell him for a month. Um, and he didn't notice? Uh, he, nope. When we brought it up after forgetting to bring it up, <laughs> um, he you actually said that he noticed, he noticed that something was off every time he would Did wash his hair. 
Uh, so here's here's the two <laughs> questions I have. First of all, I assume he just thought his shampoo had gone bad, and like <laughs> something. I think that's what he said. Is that a thing? Oh, there, there's no. They forgot to put the expiration date on it. Yeah, but, uh, it's still it's still shampoo. I feel like if Randy were here and we got to the sense of smell, he'd be like, "Let me tell you that time I didn't smell something." <laughs> Second is I didn't even know that cottage cheese could curdle. I thought it was oh, like yeah, already. It takes, it takes a while. Yeah, <laughs> like, you really have to like. You're a patient man. Some intense heat. <laughs> yeah, all right. Uh, at that point, another interesting tidbit about our band is that we all live together. So, mm-hmm. oh, there's uh, a lot of opportunities easier. for that kind of shit. I was gonna say it would be way more like Mission Impossible if you had to like come in through the skylight and like, <laughs> replace his uh, shampoo. Showering in the green room, and we like it. <laughs> that got in there shampoo of time. can't be one of the squeeze ones. <laughs> like that had to be an open mouth shampoo, right? It's so chunky. Yeah, it's in my like, like we made a bar of soap. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> or did he just not wash his hair for that month? I don't know <laughs> what his process is. Maybe yeah. a little bit of both. Uh, all right. So um, <laughs> how many times do you think that he rinse and repeat trying to like fix that? <laughs> so he's like, the bottle says until clean and this smells like cheese. <laughs> so I'm going to keep going. Um, Randy comes out of the shower like, guys, I don't think my conditioner is working for me anymore. Right. Dad, when you got into your 20s, did you experience some kind of musk? (laughs) I've been carrying this around with me for a while. Also, (laughs) did you find an overwhelming want for like, uh, uh, like, spears of carrots or <laughs> like any vegetables just i feel like i should that i've been things. feeling very low fat lately yeah <laughs> all right uh so let's uh, let's move on to this horrifying image uh and uh let's do the essence uh, of feeling which feeling. we know obviously don't this have one. any because you what? are a sociopath yeah. <laughs> yeah. we went over that one yes yeah. definitely mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'll take this one. Okay. So the very, I'm the newest member of the band. Okay. Um, I joined. How does that make you feel? <laughs> Great. <laughs> Honored. Aww. Like I the l- little brother. Yes. Um, and the very first show I played with the band, I think is one of the weirdest to date too. Oh, really? Um, okay. What happened? It was a Thanksgiving day. It was hosted by Safeway. Safeway, it like volunteer. Wait, was it at thing? Safeway? It was at the DC Convention yeah. Center. It was at wow. playing for like okay. a thousand people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Kevin, wow. Kevin wow. Durant was in the crowd. And the mayor. With his mom. He's the only guy you could see in the crowd. <laughs> exactly. You're like he's right there. He's way above everybody else. Um, and <laughs> it, it was just a, it was a strange day. Um, <laughs> yeah. And sounds like it. towards the end of the set, I looked down and. I feel a shooting pain in my finger. I look down and my base is covered in blood. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, and some somehow I split my middle finger, the tip of my middle finger, wide open. Wow. So I, I look over at the rest of the guys and I hold up my hand and it's also covered yeah, in blood. We, right. uh, obviously the listeners can't see this, but... Um, oh my Lord. There's a good... Uh, that is a picture. Can we put that on our Facebook? Yeah, please, please do. Okay, yeah, please we'll have do. to get that from That's you. And, not subtle. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome is what that is. You should have just... and roll. You should have gone all kiss with it and just like licked it and spit it in the audience. <laughs> and, like, ah! Like this one's for I'm Kevin awesome. Durant. Yeah! <laughs> Throw it on Kevin Durant. <laughs> And he's like, ah, I have AIDS now. And like, he's like, I don't have AIDS. <laughs> well, all right. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. Someone passed the goddamn stuffing. <laughs> right. Anybody ask for a cranberry sauce? Uh-huh. All right. Last, spray? last but not least, do you have anything? Uh, I think we've got everything. The sense of smell, I think, is our last one. Yeah. Uh, that one, um, it's all right. But uh, if I told <laughs> it, it would, it would definitely make my parents unhappy. Wow. It involves the police, and um, you can just fill in the, I'm the details. Listening. We were driving to Frederick. Did on they want to look at your uh, search history? Uh, <laughs> um, luckily, we keep it wiped at all times. <laughs> um, this one, we actually so we had to make it quick. We had been driving to a show, and we were doing a bit of a pre-show ritual. Um, uh-huh. And amidst all of this, totally unrelated, yeah. we spun out on 270 and ended up facing four lanes of trial and coming traffic. Oh, God. Okay. Terrifying. Yeah. Everyone saw it. We corrected. Sorry, I didn't tell you about this, Dad. <laughs> and then we, uh, we proceeded to the show, and within five minutes, we got pulled over for cutting off Gaithersburg PD as they were going onto the highway, which <laughs> I think is impossible. Oh my God. All right, we're, we're out of time. Yeah, we're yeah, going to have yeah, to find yeah. out more about You'll this story. <laughs> Next time we guys, uh, we have you guys on. Catch me after the show. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. And you got to send that picture to me. Uh, so uh, thank you so much for coming out, guys. 
Uh, again, if you uh, did not catch it, they are doing an EP release show at the Velvet Lounge on Friday the 26th with all things named uh, Attack. <laughs> uh, they'll also be in New Jersey, Connecticut, and Delaware. Go check them out live. Thanks, Doug and Logan. Uh, that is Box Era. Uh, shout out to the HWA, uh, AWH Mob. Join it by liking us, following us, retweeting us, sharing us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And we'll mention you on the show next week. We have our good friend Stone Driver. If you enjoyed the show, email us at contact at anotherwastedhour.com. If you hated the show, send your complaints to the FBI and get somebody else fired. Thanks to Ken Evinger, McNally22, Justin Rogers from Mental Records, Optimal Records, and the amazing reincarnating engineer Adam for all their contributions. Thanks to Absolutely Victor, and most, most of all, thanks to Box Era for wasting a perfectly good hour with us. This has been another Wasted Hour, and if you just realized that, don't blame us. We warned you.